everyone, welcome to this video. Um, my name is Catherine and I'm a Bachelor's of Biomedical Science graduate from King's College London and today I'll be sharing my experiences at King's with you. So when I first moved to King's there were a couple of questions and things that I was wondering about before starting at uni and I would always search on YouTube to see what I could find but there would only be a couple of videos so I thought I would share my experience to help some of you guys out if you're planning on going to King's or are interested in going there or even have an offer and are going to be going there soon. So I've written down a couple of different things on my phone that I want to discuss with you guys and questions that I personally had so I want to make sure to cover all of those. I'm going to be talking specifically about my degree and my experiences and I will do a run through about my first, second, and third year doing a Bachelor's of Biomedical Science later in this video after I go over some of these tips first. So one of the first questions that I had was where am I going to live in London and how is it living in a big city as a student? So King's College London has various different campuses scattered all over London and they have accommodations that are nearby those that you are able to have and inquire about. So I personally stayed at a private accommodation, which is different from the King's accommodation. The private accommodation is owned by the University of London, which means that all the unis in London are able to have a place there and you can mingle with people from all sorts of universities and all sorts of courses. So I thought that was a really good experience. Um, the course that I did was part of the Faculty of Life Science and Medicine, which means that my campus was in London Bridge at Guy's campus. And that means that from where I was living in my first year, which is in Stratford, I had about a 15 to 20 minute commute to get to uni, which is really good actually. And I had a very enjoyable experience. I had a one bed, for, it was a bed and a desk and a bathroom, and then I shared a kitchen with four other people. And I never had a bad experience with it. I thought everyone was very clean, everyone was very polite, and we were able to maintain our flat quite well. Just to touch on where I stayed after that, in my second year, I moved in with my boyfriend and one of his friends, and we lived in a townhouse further out because of COVID and everything. We didn't have to come into uni, but we wanted to still be in London, so we decided to rent a flat a bit further out to save a bit of money. Uh, and now I'm currently living in a one bedroom flat and have been for my third year with my boyfriend. And we are still back in Stratford, so that's about a 15 to 20 minute commute to Guy's campus in London Bridge. So one of the questions that commonly gets asked when you're thinking about moving to a new place is, how much is it gonna cost? So I think that the biggest cost that you're gonna have as a student is your tuition fees and then your rent. So for a room in a private hall, I paid about 950 pounds and that includes bills and everything and I thought that was a quite good price actually. And in my second year when I lived with two other people, I was able to pay about 700 to 800 pounds which is quite good. And now I'm paying 950 pounds again, and that does not include bills. From my personal experience, having searched London through Right Move and seeing different flats all over, I can tell you that the average price for one person would be around 900 to 1,200 pounds per month. The next question that I was wondering when I wanted to move to London was, how is it living in a big city? And I would say that it's the most amazing experience ever, especially having it be my first move to do alone. I think that when you're in such a beautiful city, surrounded by so many people all the time, it really is sort of a reality check and you sort of understand that, okay, now is your turn to go out into the world and be independent. So I personally thought that that was amazing to be able to be in such a alive city. London is alive during the day and the night. There's always something to get up to. And generally, I think they have a good selection of cafes, grocery stores, restaurants, and shops, everything you could ever need you have in London. The way student life is in London is quite nice. So when I first moved here, it was right before COVID and I was able to join a lot of freshers events. So we had, for example, lots of parties, we had 
had some gatherings at our house and all of that sort of stuff. And when you move to London, my biggest tip would be to not buy tickets for the full month. You're probably not going to go to all of the events. I think that once you find your group of friends that you're interested in going to these events with, you guys should discuss and figure out which ones are the most interesting. So we ended up, I went with my boyfriend and his friends and some friends that I had made. And we decided to buy, I think it was a three week pack of tickets where we could basically go to any club of that night that was hosting a freshers event. And after a couple of days, I was exhausted and I realized that we probably shouldn't have bought the remainder of the tickets because the events were quite similar. So for example, you have like a white party, you had, I don't really remember, but there were like various different themes for these parties and they were all pretty much the same, just clubbing, music, and drinks and all of that, but it was exciting as a student going to London for the first time to be able to be put in that sort of scene and experience the nightlife and be surrounded by people who are going to be going to your uni and everything, so I thought it was a lovely experience and you should definitely take part in Freshers because it's a great way to get to know your friends and it's also a really good time for you to just like relax, enjoy and celebrate the fact that you finished your A-levels or your IB and that you're ready to start this new chapter at uni. Getting to uni is not a problem at all. I take the Jubilee line and it's really fast and directly to London Bridge, so I would totally recommend Stratford as an area for anyone who's interested in starting at King's. You have the beautiful park here, you have Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, you have the Westfield Shopping Center, and it's just a general nice place where you can sort of feel like you're away from the city at the same time as being so close to the city because of all the greenery that you have around this area. There are lots of apps that you can use in London to sort of navigate yourself around, but I just stick to maps. You just type in the station that you have to get to and it shows you exactly how many stops there are, how long it's going to take and everything. So it's really hard to get lost in London if you follow the maps. Before I started Kings, I was always wondering, will I have enough time to have a part-time job? So for me, I didn't have a part-time job in my first or second year, but I had one in my third year. And it, it was manageable, I was able to do it. I worked a couple of shifts, so I mean, it would be 16 to 20 hours per week. But because of COVID, my schedule was very flexible, which allowed me to actually work that many hours and sort of organize my time to be able to catch up on other work and all of that afterwards. I would recommend to anyone who's looking at getting a part-time job to do that either in towards the end of your first year and in your second year. Your third year is going to be the most difficult and challenging one. You will have to be very good at time management, managing all your assessments, coursework, studying for your exams, working on your uni applications, everything. So third year is just a jumble of things that you have to do so i would totally recommend doing it in your second year or towards the end of your first year if you want to have a part-time job there are opportunities to work in the labs with your professors and everything as well so that's also a way that you can reach out to professors to see if they have some sort of part-time job as a lab assistant or as someone who can help out with experiments through monitoring or anything so another thing I want to touch on is the work-life balance. So as a uni student, your main priority is to be studying and working really hard and getting good grades, but you also need to make sure that you spend enough time relaxing, being with friends, speaking with family, treating yourself to different things as well because you won't get anywhere if you're just in the books all the time. I have said this and I will always say this that your uni experience is not only about being in your bedroom and reading your books, it's about getting out, exploring the beautiful city that you're living in, meeting new people, networking, going to beautiful parks, it's all about making it memorable. I personally thought that it was quite easy to have a good work-life balance at King's. Every single module has a dedicated amount of lectures and hours that you have to spend on it and you sort of add on your own personal reading time on this side, but in between that, you have your own time to get up to anything. For example, join an outdoor yoga class or take a walk in a park nearby. I think that that is what I would really encourage people to do who are looking into starting at King's. 
So more specifically about my degree and just generally King's College London, I would say that it's an amazing uni. You're surrounded by people from all over the world. People speak various languages and you have so much to learn from all these people that you will meet. My cohort was quite big, so I wasn't able to meet every single person, but I would always meet a new person every time I came into the lecture theater. For my degree, the first year was called a common year one, and you basically do all sorts of science related topics. I had to do biochemistry, neuroscience, anatomy and physiology, genetics, and all of those topics just so that I could understand fully what it was I wanted to study for my bachelor's degree. In my second and in my third year, I was able to choose all of my modules so that I could specifically tailor them to my personal interests. And I think this is very unique about King's College London because you can really get into depth about what you want to understand and what you're curious about. And then you will be able to apply to a master's degree that can further this knowledge. So I focused a lot on genetics and cancer and disease. I personally thought this was interesting throughout the whole time. If you choose modules in your second year that you're not a big fan of, you can switch your modules or you can change modules in your third year. As King's College London is quite a large uni, or at least my cohort was quite a big one, which means that I didn't really get to have a one-to-one -one with a professor, but the professors at King's are very friendly and they always encourage having direct contact with them, asking them questions after the lectures and engaging in the workshops that they host as well. King's homepage called Keats has a very good function. It's called the FAQs. So this is basically where you can post frequently asked questions and your professors will write back and answer your questions and it can be specifically about lecture content, about the coursework or anything you have throughout the module and I thought this was a really great function to engage and properly have your answers clarified without having to raise your hat in front of 600 other people. So for assessments and how everything comes together, for my degree at least, we had a quite specific set of how things were going to happen. So in my first year, we had coursework for every single module, and that was the same for my second and my third year. And this could be anything from a presentation, to a poster, to an essay, to a lab report. They varied quite greatly. And this was worth about 30 to 40% of my final mark, which means that for the remainder, the 70% or 60% would be made up of the exams, which are typically held in May or in January. In my first year, my exams were all multiple choice questions. In my second year, they were multiple choice questions plus essay questions. And in my third year, they were only critical essay questions. So the formatting varies. So I think that in your first and second year, you are really being tested on understanding the foundational basics and the basis of everything else. And in your third year, you're sort of being pushed off to do further reading, to understand the topic on another level, on another basis. And I think that this was a very good way of developing my knowledge and my curiosity. So that's all that I wanted to cover in today's video about my time at King's and my tips and all my experiences. So if there was anything that I missed, please don't hesitate to let me know and I can answer your questions. And stay tuned because I will be starting my master's degree at Imperial College London and I will be doing vlogs and showing you guys around. So I'm looking forward to that. Bye bye!